Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome back to October Lake in Planet Zoo, a project where we're building this really large park situated in the Canadian Highlands. In today's video, we are going to be revamping the first ever habitat we built in this park, which was the otter habitat. If you like the sound of that and you do like today's video, please do consider leaving a like on the video and of course do subscribe for more Planet Zoo content. I upload every Wednesday at 5pm UK time. Uh, except for last week, which which um, I had to take a break because I just had a lot of uni work. So apologies for that, but definitely was uh, needed. I got the a little bit of extra time to just finish up what I needed to be doing. And that meant this week I could focus a little bit more on today's video, which is not the longest, but um, I thought it was much needed because the otter habitat was essentially quite an early habitat in the lifespan of this park. It was the first one, of course, and it was essentially almost like a test run for me because I wanted to get to grips with all the new stuff that came with the Aquatic Pack DLC, mainly the new foliage, the new uh, full rock pieces. And now that I've gone through the whole park and I've kind of learned how all these pieces work, it is much nicer to come back, redo the habitat on a smaller scale, and just kind of really take our time with it and make it look kind of more up to the standard of the rest of the park. So that's what we'll be doing today. And as you can see, it's going to be a smaller habitat than it was last time. Last time the otter habitat was quite large. In fact, I thought it might have been too big. Like, of course, it's great to give animals as much space as possible. But in this case, I think it just didn't suit the, the vibe of the habitat. I think because it was just too much water, uh, you could not quite see the otters from all parts of the, the habitat. And um, it just felt a little too vast almost, essentially. And uh, it was also a little bit weird because the otters didn't even have enough land area, but they had plenty of water area. So I decided to give them more land area this time around, and they're very happy with the habitat. It's still almost double what they actually need. So um, it's plenty of space for them, and I think it turns out quite nice. In fact, most of what I take away is going to be part of another habitat in the future. And um, the area that was left behind, I think, still works out pretty well. They've got plenty of space to even do the uh, deep diving animations and stuff like that, so it all works out in the end. And I think the new habitat definitely looks quite a bit nicer. Not an awful lot actually changes, um, besides the, the main bulk of the habitat itself. Like, the viewing area, not much changes. I changed the, um, the, the canopy up top later in the video, but that's about it. I changed the viewing area slightly. And I changed the colour of the rocks because early on the rocks were all um, a lot paler, a lot more close to white. Which I think um, didn't suit the vibe as much because of course these are tropical otters. And that's actually one thing I wanted to do as well is that in the early stages of October Lake we actually didn't talk that much about the animals. Um, and I thought that'd be something that's really great to do now because we can revisit them and talk a little bit more about them. And in fact I didn't really... If I remember correctly, I didn't actually talk that much about the giant otter at all. So let's talk a little bit about them because they're super, super interesting animals. So they're from South America, of course, and they are the largest otter species. And in fact, the longest member of the weasel family, which is something I didn't even know. But they, they're big. They reach up to 1.7 meters or five, uh, five and a half feet or so, which is like, that is my height, basically. And that is crazy to think that that's the size of an otter. So really crazy. Unfortunately, they're quite endangered. Um, unfortunately, because of course the Amazon River uh, suffers from a lot of deforestation, a lot of like encroachment on habitats by human industrialization and stuff. So it is quite unfortunate. Um, in the in captivity, there's not actually that many of them. I believe uh, less than a hundred worldwide. So not really regularly found in zoos, but they can be. They can be seen in uh, certain zoos, like the Philadelphia Zoo, I believe. Um, I'm not sure if they're still there now. But they are very social animals, very, very cute. Um, and like many otters, they've got these really interesting set of vocalizations. So they really um, communicate with each other by essentially making all these distinct sounds. And out of all the otters, people think the giant Amazonian otter that we have here might be the most vocal. So they have the most number of sounds. Uh, kind of grunts, squeaks, uh, snorts, that sort of thing. So lots of different types of things to communicate with each other. And um, when they live in such big group sizes, which can be anywhere from like two of them up to like 20 otters, uh, these kind of communication behaviors are super important. And they have like a dominant breeding pair within the group, which kind of looks after a lot of the other members. So 
quite like familial and I think that's really cute of them. They're just super super interesting creatures and uh, they don't do too badly in captivity but it's just hard to get them there because again they're so rare in the wild and you do not want to take animals from the wild for captivity. You want to of course breed them in captivity so that you can you know improve the gene pool and stuff like that so it is, it is a bit tricky to do that and I'm not sure how well breeding is going in captivity, can't find an awful lot of information about that. But um, from what I know about other otters, they tend to be uh, quite good at breeding in captivity, they have babies quite often. In fact, in my local zoo, they have a bunch of Asian small clawed otters, which are the most common otters in captivity, if I'm not mistaken. And they've recently given birth to a new litter of pups, and they've got a whole bunch of them now, so... Clearly otters in general can breed quite decently in captivity. Again, not sure about these ones specifically, uh, mainly because they have, um, they're quite different from a lot of the main uh, other otter species. Again, they're much bigger, they're much more, um, they're just quite interesting I think. They're also so big that they don't really have an awful lot of natural predators in the wild. They are vulnerable of course to things like um, jaguars, anacondas, uh, maybe even caiman occasionally, but they are not actually, they're like big enough that they can pretty much ward off these things, so that's kind of crazy. Uh, they eat large fish, of course, they eat mostly just fish. Um, the piscivores, essentially, uh, they eat piranha pretty often, which is quite interesting, I think. Um, stingrays, things like that, anything they can really find, and it is quite cool. One thing they cool, uh, cool about fishing is that they actually have kind of a teaching behavior. So the adults teach the young how to fish. So it's not like just something they know how to do from birth. They have to learn it, which I think is really interesting. And uh, in fact, while I was doing some research about these otters, I just found out that uh, they, they were thought to be extinct in Argentina. But as of yesterday, there was a news article saying that they've just uh, discovered a few in the country. So they haven't seen any giant otters in Argentina since the 1980s. And they've just so uh, seen one recently. So that is a really good sign that they're coming back into the ecosystem. And it's um, essentially just a really, really good thing. There's a project called Rewilding Argentina, which has been working to uh, bring more giant otters back into this habitat. It's a part of a big project to restore some of the larger native predators to Argentina which have kind of moved away. So jaguars, uh, caiman, that sort of thing. But these otters specifically, if I'm not mistaken, isn't actually, yeah, this, this giant otter that they spotted isn't part of this rewilding program. So it just happened to be there. And it's really, really good sign, I think, that these uh, creatures are coming back, these, these beautiful animals. And uh, it's just really, really nice to see. And um, it, it's just overall a very good sign, I think, and super, super interesting. Anyways, that's it about the giant otters. I hope you guys uh, enjoy learning about them a bit more. I think they're incredibly cool animals, and it's nice to get a chance to talk about them as well, because, of course, the first time we went around, we were a lot more focused on the habitat build itself. I don't know if I actually spoke about them. I haven't watched that episode since um, I released it. And, of course, that was actually one of the most viewed episodes um, on this entire October Lake playlist and maybe one of my most viewed videos of all time. So maybe I did, I can't remember. So who knows if you remember watching that video. I mean, I could always just go and check, but I am remarkably lazy sometimes. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see whether I actually get around to it. But I, I think I didn't. So it'd be nice to, nice to um, talk about them here, basically. Anyways, on screen you will have seen me build the habitat. It is quite different now. There's more of a shelter for them in the back, a nice wooden area with a little bit of a rock slide that leads down. I gave them a mud pit this time around as well for them to play in. And just so many more rocks because in zoos I often notice otters just get lots and lots of rock slides, you know. Essentially lots of places for them to have fun and play because they're such playful animals. And one really cool thing about otters, I think, is that they're some of the most fun animals to watch in a zoo because they're always like active and engaging and having a great time and they do have very playful behaviors and I think seeing that in a zoo is a great thing because you can tell like they're enjoying themselves when they play with each other when they're like roaming the habitat freely you know that they're not like stressed you know they're having a good time and it's very easy to see that and I think that's just a great thing in fact two of both my local zoos have otters um being London Zoo and Battersea Zoo as well both of them, I'll, every time I go there, the otters are out and about. 
They're never really like shy or hiding, they're always around. So I love seeing them in zoos and they're always such a like a favorite for the guests as well. Kids especially love coming up to the glass, watching them swim under the water. And it's just, ah, it's, it's always a really great time seeing them. So I think they're just brilliant animals to have in captivity. Um, just to really inspire people, I think, because they, they work really well as, as kind of an, almost like an ambassador for their kind of species. Um, and yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're coming up to the end of this episode. Uh, we're not far off. You may have noticed I used some moss on the rocks and I, I'm almost certain I've never used those moss pieces in this game before. Like at all. And I thought, yeah, I'll just add some here. Adds to the slightly more tropical feel of these guys. So I thought it would work out fine. But yeah, it's, it still blows my mind that there are pieces and animals in this game, which I just have never used or maybe just used once. Uh, as far as the animals go, I've definitely used all of them because I used to play the challenge modes and the scenarios, but maybe like I, there's a good chance there's some animals you haven't used in over a year, which is again, why I'm so excited to keep going with this park and keep adding in some more animals and stuff like that. I'm looking forward to adding in just even more animals that I'm just not uh, used to or haven't used very often. And I think that'll be a, a really fun thing to do. Anyways, we're coming up to the end now, so I just want to say uh, very quickly, of course, thank you, thank you guys as always for all the support. Thank you for watching the video. Um, again, apologies for skipping last week, but I think it really helped me kind of get back on track with university work a bit more, and also give me a bit of time um, to take a break from the game as well. Like as much as I love it, a break sometimes just helps me kind of refocus and kind of gain like when I come back to it with like a fresh pair of eyes, I just like can see things a bit more clearly. Oh, also actually on screen, we're just finishing up the new canopy. It's a lot more like simple, not as uh, really as complex. And I think having these darker shades looks better than having the really bright white ones before. I think it's just less, um, less striking. But anyways, uh, as always, if you liked the video, please do give it a like. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you thought of today's video. Uh, leave suggestions for the next animal we add to the park. I am completely open to suggestions, so totally free to um, essentially add whatever you like might feel appropriate really i don't like there's no real limitations except i i think we're starting to move away from larger animals now i think the largest animal besides the ones we've added so far might be the bison that i add so the bison is it the bison yeah um might be that but uh, otherwise i'd rather stick to smaller ones but yeah um if you like this content and you want to see more of course do subscribe to the channel uh it really does mean a lot and as always, I will see you all in the next video. Bye.